Everybody, welcome to the December 7th meeting, the Historic District Commission. Uh, the board's actions in these matters have been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. I'd like to introduce the members. Uh, to my far right, I have Joanna Landis. Thank you. I have Dr. Dan Brown. Good evening. Um, let's see, we have Martin and Reagan are out. Is Martin coming Martin in? Martin is coming. Martin is coming in. Uh, my name is John Wyckoff. Uh, Nick Cracknell from Planning Department. Good evening. Um, Rich Blaylock is not here, but he is due in also. Margot Doring. Good evening. Mr. David Adams. Good evening. And Karen Farr. Good evening. So we have the approval of minutes right off the bat. That's so if everyone's looked at them, if someone would like to make a motion. I'll make, make a, a motion. motion. We approve the minutes of November 2nd and 9th. And I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Very good. So um, Nick has administrative approvals. We have two, three, and five, um, which we're going to give a decision on, regardless of the fact that they need to go through the Board of Adjustment. I can discuss that. Yeah. So 40 Court Street, 11 Chief Street, and 47 Howard yeah. uh, may, in fact, need uh, BOA relief for the setback. Uh -huh. We're not sure on 47 Howard. It looks like it may not, but definitely for 40 Court and 11 Chief. Yeah. If we could, could we do uh, 3 11 Chief Street? Because uh, Karen uh, Buffard cannot, uh, she's abstained from this one. So I think that we could do that separately. Okay. All righty. But the idea would be if we're going to move forward with them, um, that they're moved forward with a condition, they get that relief and deal with the screening and the conduit uh, tonight. So do you want me to go through the, we, ha we have seven on the agenda. Yeah. Can I start with number one or? I'd like to start, start with, with Start with 11, yeah. Chief Street. Right. Okay. Let me just share my screen. Yeah. <clears throat> Which one are you starting with? I guess we're starting with number three. Number three, 11 oh. Sheave Street. Okay. Sorry. Coming. Well, just as a, a matter of explanation, we were told, gosh, a couple years ago that if um, somebody pulled out of, you know, had to recuse themselves from one of the um, agendas, then they would have to uh, be out of all of them. But if they just we separated that one, voted on it separately, then they can indeed uh, participate in the whole approval process. Yes. Okay. So 11 Chief Street, um, they, are, they are asking for really only one item that requires administrative approval, the roofing, the siding, and the, the replacement bulkhead and the chimney cap are all exempt items. So they put them all in the application to show what their intentions are in respect to re-roofing and re-siding the rear addition and replacing the bulkhead and adding a chimney cap. So they're, they're asking for a, a mini split condenser um, in the rear of the building. Uh, I suppose that would be facing Custom House Way. and. What was not clear to me in the application, I don't know if anybody's here from the applicant, but it wasn't clear whether there was any conduit going up the outside of the, the building. Nick, I'm, I'm also unclear as to where the mini split is going on the back of the building. There's no, like, this is here, or there's no pencil drawing showing where it actually sits. Yes. Uh, so. Is anybody here from this application? And the, the applicant is, well, Matt Silva has filled this out. Um, well, let's continue it for a week and get those two answers, questions answered. Very good. Okay. Yep. Well, that'll come back on the 14th. Are there any other recu recusals? No. So we'll, 591 Middle Street is replacement of a wire fence with a wood cedar fence. Uh, the only stipulation I thought we might want to include was that the fence needs to be no taller than four feet 
within the front yard setback. Otherwise, it can be this six feet in cedar as proposed per your approval. So there's, there's pictures in here of the wire fence and the. Yep. Is there agreement on this stipulation? Well, that's a, actually the law, not rather than the <laughs> idea. Yeah. I agree with the law. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as long as it's clear that it's in the same style as been, has been presented. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we add that? Yeah, I might as well mention it. Okay. So the same style as shown. Mm -hmm. The application in the fence will be no taller than four feet in the front yard setback. Okay. okay. Can we go with that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Forty Court Street. This is an application for again a mini split does show where it's located in the line sets that uh, it's in the rear of the property however it would have been nice to hear also have a tax map showing that that in fact is the rear so if your preference is to also move that to next week just to confirm that's the rear of the building then I don't have an issue with that I would also add that I don't see screening yeah. design. No, there is no screen proposed for this location. Okay. So the idea would be we'd like to see some, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay. And I, I'm not sure that there's anything different they can do with how they're running the conduit. Would it be? I mean, the, probably the only thing they could do other than relocate it, but it there doesn't appear to be an easier location no, it's to pretty, somehow yeah. get inside. I mean, this is the path of least resistance for these installers is to put it up the outside of the house. If there was a chase inside, it's always preferred, I think, to have it inside the house than snaking up the outside. But Well, as, as you said, if we could confirm, because it looks like there are two different locations. I walked the building in, with this in my hand, and I yep. did not come out believing that I understood where it okay. was going to even have a conversation as to what impact it was going to have. So we're going to get a tax map from them as well. Great. Okay. Um, 55 Gate Street. <clears throat> uh, 55 Gates is seeking two things, I believe, and I think, and Whitney, it's been her project, it's been in front of us. Mm -hmm once or twice uh, for approval. They're seeking installation of, uh, again, a mini split. They do have screening of a fence on either side. I think the fence is five feet in height, but I'll let Ann maybe clarify. Uh, so that's the first component of the request. The second is the, the side yard <coughs> uh, wall is being proposed to be hardy plank, and my understanding is that's largely related to the building code fire separation requirements, but if it's not, could you speak to that, Ann? And Ann, uh, Isaac looked today and believed that this project had already uh, uh, received approval from the Board of Adjustment for these yes. condensers? Yes, we did last month yeah. okay. or, um, for the condensers. Yeah, so we've got the zoning approval for that. For the setback. And then I've run into this another, you know, when you're residing a building and it's, uh, Used to, they used to just enforce it at anything less than th three feet or less, but now three to five that you're needing to have, um, you know, some fire separation. So if they don't require it, we'd rather do it in cedar. Um, but if it's going to be a requirement, I figured I should ask for that while I'm here for the other. How much of that side wall is within five feet? It's about five feet. 14 feet of it. From the corner, you know, the little one-story bump out, that's the closest. It's about a little over three feet from the property line. But then from that gable where the corner board goes down, it's almost 14 feet in um, that's still within five feet. Okay. So it's a, it's a predominant part of that elevation. It looks like the corner of the addition is um, touching the property line. Is that right? No. Uh, no. Three feet. Um, three feet? It's uh, about three feet. Here's the. There's the fence, and then when the my clients bought this property, they worked with the neighbor to get the fence relocated <coughs> to the actual property line. It was on the neighbor's property line, so that's the one. Like, it's hard to generate. It's a complicated site, but I was able to relate that to that 
fence line that had been reset. So I think I'm pretty accurate in terms of location. To the I, mean, I think line. the question's coming because of the tax map shows the corner on the lot line. Uh, yeah. On your next page, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, the tax it, map's not very accurate for this property. Okay. It's a highly irregular. Do we have property. a design of the screening. Excuse me. The screen. The What's screening the is the there's a current fence that runs along that backyard and then it stops at the corner of the building. We're going to extend that fence and return it to the building to hide the two oh, it units. It will be the same as that fence. Say exactly the same as that <coughs> fence. Five feet Just tall. a little bit lower. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Cuz and then the other thing is we want to shift <coughs> that double window a bit so it's just not right over the heat pump. Oh, so that's a third piece. The, yes, and I noted that yeah. on the yeah on the application. Okay. The shift, okay. Thank you. And, uh, yes, Mr. Adam. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, um, I had the pleasure of, of and good fortune of running into Ann on site when I was doing my rounds, and so we've spoken about this, but we didn't go as far. I. I, hopefully, I was fairly good at communicating my displeasure at the whole idea of, of one or two sides of every building in the South End having Hardy Plank put on it as an interpretive of clapboards. Um, and Anne was very careful to describe to me that this was an issue with uh, some sort of code having fire to do code. with some sort of one hour fire resistant rating. Right. So, my question it comes to a point. Um, is there a kind of Substrate that would achieve that one hour fire rating so that a 18th century replicating or 19th century replicating finishes could be put on top of it and still meet the one hour. We'd fire have to code. completely take all the sheathing off. Why completely? I, I, um, I know that we're getting into the weeds, and I, that wasn't the point of this, but does that <laughs> completely take the sheathing off? Couldn't you just cover it? You could cover it, but then it changes all the wall depths and things. Uh, I don't, okay, but boy, if given the option of changing someone's wall depth by a half of an inch mm -hmm. and having half of the house sided with cementitious siding, mm -hmm. I'd go for the half inch, mm -hmm. don't you think? Well, I guess uh, it's a matter of cost and also when you look at this building, the only place you can really see that elevation is from I do far understand away. that there's a circumstance here that this is a, probably the least visible the least part visible of that portion house. of this building. Uh, mm -hmm. Indeed, but it's still in the purview and and mm -hmm. I'm concerned about where this is all going, not just mm -hmm. the building that we have before us, but yep. throwing my net a little bit further and thinking I've got another yes. problem. I guess if it's a deal breaker, we'd probably have to do it because we need to reside. But you and could still do it. I mean, it'd be den glass, right? That the den's could, glass, and then glass. you, you know, you put things in the wall and have five H sheetrock on the, you know, rated sheetrock on the interior. So the den's glass isn't enough. No, that's part of the assembly. It's the exterior part of the fire rated assembly. But the cementitious hardy board is enough by itself. It's enough by itself wow. to be that outside um, barrier. If I could just add, also, I think you, I think you have to use the hardy because it's not flammable. You put wood on top of a one-hour rated wall, you still have a flammable surface. Yeah, but it and meets I think the code, that's though. the problem. It meets the code. I mean, it meets the code. The den yeah. den's glass is not a flammable surface underneath right. it. And You'd it, have so to burn through the clapboard, and once you get to the den's glass and the mineral stop. will behind that, and then the five eighths. It goes from both directions, from inside it, to out and outside to in. To David's point, I mean, I think I personally think it's a good point. This is kind of like chimneys. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone, and <clears> the slippery slope is just like everything else that's a slippery slope. <laughs> if the house becomes three-sided uh, wood, one-sided hardy, or two-sided hardy because it's a corner lot or too close to two abutters, what what really prevents the subsequent uh, application from being, I want to make it all the same, uh, and we lose all the wood eventually mm -hmm. because it's, it's being pushed in that direction. I mean, I always thought the problem with the dens glass, if there was one, beyond maybe being more complicated a solution, was sometimes it, it makes a mess of the trim boards and things because the wall's getting thicker. But uh, it doesn't sound like that's the case here with this style of, of house. 
Um, that anyway. Can I just say something? Is it? Um, you said that it's not 100 percent sure that the fire department is using three well, feet instead of five feet. Well, the last project I was on, they were, you know, pressed it at five feet. Okay. And in the, in, in right. past projects, so I, I they think haven't that, enforced um, it until three feet. We could accept the stipulation that it um, it would be five feet unless it was required by the fire department. Right. Correct. And could the um, could the hardy plank be put four inches on center? Yes, you can get hardy that will work at four inches, right? The exposure. The Before exposure. four inches to weather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, you can get that. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The smooth side out. If yep. you, if, you right. but, yeah. if it well, comes to a push comes to And show. it's just, um, it's not, it's really not even the entire rear because um, once you get back to the original house in the bay, that's far enough back. You can see on the, the way the lot plan goes. So it's really that one gable and, the, yeah. and one face of the one story. I mean, it sounds like a small thing to just take the clapboards off and, and put this 5 eighths <coughs> material. Is that what it is, 5 eighths, or is it 3 quarter, or what? It's, I think it's half inch, actually. Oh, half inch. But um, then there again, all the window trims are We're replacing the windows. Somehow, yeah. so it's more the corner out. boards, and the we're not replacing all the trim on the building. Um, the frieze and the corner boards, you know, that might have some implication there. Okay. So it seems like there's three yeah. three options for yes. you guys to consider. Right. One is you you deny that component with a request to the building department that they waive because it's a historic structure. Uh, the replacement of the siding from from the application that it stay wood because that's certainly a possibility that the code has exemptions they're they're always looking to make it as safe and as best as possible so if you're looking at it through that lens rather than a preservation lens you're going to recommend that it be hardy plank i mean i work with these folks in the inspection department that's what they do in the fire department yeah. So you you could for now deny it and suggest they issue yeah. a waiver. It's their you call, pull not it ours. You pull yeah, it you take that that piece would not move forward, uh, unlike the condensers. Or you you say Plan B is the dens glass, and it would be replaced with cedar. Or Plan C is to give them what they're asking for. You mean you got, you got to, Those are your choices. I thought my stipulation idea was pretty good, but otherwise we have to pull this out. Pull it out. We got to pull it out and disapprove it. That's well, that, what you're, you're saying. You would be bifurcating the application <clears throat> and approving the mechanicals, and not and stipulating that you're not approving, or you are, depending on which of those you choose, what to do with the siding. But you're not pulling it out. We need a vote for that. Well, I understand. Yeah. Can I just add that? You cannot put a combustible surface, even if you rate the wall and you put dense glass as a subsheeting and get a rated wall. I do not believe that you can put a combustible material on the outer side of that because it will just cause the flame from the next house to spread. Yeah, I think it's been done, including I've, I've, I've done it the Salvation Army did it. Yeah. Uh, okay, know, I just yeah, don't think that. Yeah. Hmm. I think we should assume it can be done. Uh, okay. And it, the problem is the inspection department if they have a different opinion. Okay, so let's pull this out and bifurcate it, as you said, or or, or choose to allow it to go forward as presented. You have to decide what you want to do as a group. David, can you excuse this, considering um, how not visible that this wall is, and and with the idea that you're. We, I just believe that, we, that I've just come to the realization that this is happening. And I think we need to nip it in the bud. Yeah, we need to find some accommodation between the the code, which I, I will go on record saying I'm all for codes. Um, and but there's a, a hard spot that is run into. If there was a possible workaround, I'd like to see us move to it sooner than later. That's my opinion. You asked my opinion, sir. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> I agree because there's so many houses in the south end that are less than three feet. Or five now. Yeah. Five feet, whatever the rules are. 
Okay, so uh, looks like we are going to postpone this or continue it. Um, number 547 Howard Street. So um, I guess we need a vote on this. Does it help you to have it's a gates. vote on uh, approval for the condensers tonight or have? No, it'd be yeah. So I okay. think you should do that. And, and maybe in the next week we could figure out yeah, with the inspection department. Yeah, do some yeah. homework. Okay. Who's so going to make a motion so to pull this out? And then we'll have to have a motion to vote on it. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we separate the uh, mechanical portion of this application and postpone the rest. And here the mechanicals only this evening. Second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? All right. That works. Thanks, Ann. And, and I have those brackets, the hinges. Are they, are they They're all upstairs. Oh, okay. I'll come by then. Perfect. All right. Um, okay. Could you be sure that the window is also the windows? Let's do that next week. The windows. Yeah. Well, what, what did he just take out? Only the siding? Yeah. Then the windows are in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 47, are we in 47 Howard? Yes. I think we are. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. 47 Howard is, once again, yeah. uh, mechanical equipment. They. Uh, Put it in the rear yard, but there is no screening proposed, and I don't think you'd want the conduit to be painted white, no. which is how it comes. <laughs> so that's a factory finish. This is a, yeah. So this is another question of whether if we're going to want everything screened, regardless of location, then this needs to come back next week. And there's there's an awful lot of spaghetti of conduit on this poor house. It's running two units, I think. Yeah, it must be. But do you have a preference in how to get to the second floor? Move it inside. Well, yeah, same same as always, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I understand that it's easiest to to place it outside, I, and I'm sympathetic with that. But uh, in a situation where you can't run it discreetly up the side of a building, I think we should push back a little bit and ask people to relook at the interior possibilities. If it if they can do it and it just runs right up a corner board and it can be hidden as if it's a gutter and they want to run it on the outside, yeah, I'm less worried about that. But where you literally have these things sort of running rights and lefts um, and we don't really know if they've taken a serious look at moving it inside, I think we should ask. Okay. So why don't we continue that and we'll have them here at the next meeting. Anybody object to that? Okay. Same goes with the screen, right? Yes. All right. Uh, speaking of screens, I think the next one is Seven Hancock. Yes. Which was a stipulation to return with a screen design, which they've done. And they show it uh, in their application. Everybody saw it? Yes. I think it looks great. Uh, that's a very nice uh, screen design. For I think they should get a gold star because they're putting it inside the house and there's no running up and down the walls. Yes, and also. No. Yep. This is what you would hope. This is the gold ideal. Gold standard. Yeah. Yes. Next year we'll come up with the gold stars. Gold stars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Board no issues with that. Last one, 40 Pleasant Street. This is what we looked at in a site visit a couple of months ago as part of a larger application that included a variety of components. What got left here was the uh, the wall lighting and on the exterior, and they did a mock-up of some of the up lighting over the, uh, the Thai restaurant on the side of the building, which looked pretty good, but it was an incomplete visualization of, of what they're proposing. They weren't able to do a full mock-up of all the lighting given the logistics involved. So they, they did some photo simulations which they've included in the packet uh, representing what this is going to look like on this building. And they uh, made clear in both the application and a conversation I had with the representative that this lighting is fully uh, regulated um, so the, the brightness of the lighting can be adjusted if if it's found to be too bright which was a concern of one of the abutters on Porter Street 
uh, when we had that hearing. I think the color, the uh, warmth yeah. of the lighting can be adjusted. They can change also. the colors of that yeah. uh, <coughs> seasonally. Yeah. So. Is it dark sky approved? I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, it's supposed to be. So you don't even have to stipulate that. It's supposed to be. So, okay. That's, uh, a, that's a requirement. I'm not sure how well accent lighting does with those regulations. So, but it's pointed against the building. I would guess. Yeah. 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 It, it shouldn't <clears throat> spill out off the building. Okay, that's it. Well, that's it. Yeah. Are you going to run down that? <laughs> okay. So we did. Here. We did the fence. Uh, well, the yeah. fence was had no stipulations. Forty Court Street is coming back in a week. Chief Street's coming back in a week, Good. right? A group. Um, Fifty-five gates. We'll find out what happens with the siding in a week. And forty-seven Howard will come back, and then so seven Hancock and forty Pleasant were seem to be okay. So, so one, six, I, and seven. I do have a question about forty Pleasant, and that is, who regulates if they turn these things on and and it's really bright? Who's to say it's too bright or not bright? I mean, there are just, there are lighting standards in the zoning ordinance that are enforceable, so it would be in the, the zoning legal ordinance. Part. Yeah, if we get a complaint, we'll have to go out and test it and see if it complies. If it doesn't, they'll have to correct it. Okay. Okay, one, six, and seven. We have a motion. A motion to approve with any stipulations that Nick has indicated. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And against? Opposed? Opposed? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I'd like to vote opposed. I'm shocked at the uh, at the impact of the scheme on the old customs house. Okay. okay. And I have to vote uh, abstain. On the same one? I wasn't. I was late for one, so oh. I didn't really hear the. Okay. Discussion. Well, we're still we're good with that. We still have it's enough still votes. Still yep. good. Yeah, we, you should announce here, John, if, unless you want me to. We got a lot of continuances. I've written the dates down. I don't know if Isaac gave you those. No, all I've got is um, so 43 homes, and I just quickly write. Yeah, go, go So 43 it. homes is being. Uh, there's a request to continue that to January. Three Walton is also January. 33 uh, South Mill Pond, that's being requested to be withdrawn. That one I have to recuse. He's withdrawing. So, I have to oh, okay. I didn't know if I had to, yeah. but I'm a, a butter. He's looking at alternative fuller good. Uh, options. Good, good, good. Yeah, I talked to him. He's not running away. Um, 93 Pleasant Street for the uh, Treadwell building. That's being continued. The request is to continue that to next week. And just so everybody knows, we got a new set of plans Friday. I have not gone through those, but I've been assured. <sighs> that uh, the wall disassembly storage and reconstruction component has been removed from that application. So they're going back to the original approval of shoring up the wall, doing the work behind it. I believe that's the case. I have not put eyes on the application, but that's one of the reasons they requested the continuance. Hmm. They will still be coming in for the elevator override being a little taller, some of the siding change. There were other probably much more minor changes. Yes, David. Uh, could I make a request of, of them to provide a, uh, some sort of graphic vis uh, representation of what the elevator override looks like from across the street on Pleasant? Because uh, when, no. you, when you scale it on the drawing, you scale it in accordance with the roof of the Treadwell House. But when you stand across the street on Pleasant and look up, it's not in line with the... Uh, over the... What do you? Where are you on Across Pleasant street. street? Because the obviously the Treadwell is a big building on yeah. Pleasant. So right, but there's it, the roof line is divided into two parts, yep. and and I'm concerned of what you're going to, how much of that elevator override is going to be visible from Pleasant. So it's sort of the Floros. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Area. The, the Floros corner. Got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, That's colorful. Yeah. <laughs> what we're calling that. Okay. Okay. So. 93 Pleasant will be here next week, I think, without the wall component. Um, so that leaves us with 15 Mount Vernon tonight and one Rains. 
and 95 Daniel is being uh, is requesting a continuance to February. They're the ones that. Okay, so uh, we need a motion to um, continue 43 Holmes Court, which is public hearing A, and 3 Walton Alley, which is B, um, till next month. To January. Jan January, yep. Yes, yep, we need next that month. motion. So move without prejudice. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we need also a motion um, to... to with oh we need a motion to withdraw yeah, just, or they've already I, done it well i think you should okay how about a motion to withdraw to 33 south street which is number c uh letter c so moved i'll second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. abstain okay abstain um so then we have a request to postpone till next week and that's um 93 pleasant street could i have a motion please so moved Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. And then you might as well do 95, Daniel, the last item on the agenda. That's February. Oh. So we have a request to postpone on work sessions, old business. It's 95 Daniel Street um, to February, did you say? To February. So moved. Second. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right, so that just cuts over. things right down. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, I'm recused from E and F. Demolish. <laughs> um, okay, well, have a good evening. No, they're coming back. Wow. Wow. That's it for us. It was denied. Wow. We're going to have a party for you after. So I'll vote it against it. Demolition. Let the fun begin. No, we'll come back. Is she What's having a party? Demolition, but <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a petition of Robin and Cyrus Noble, owners for property located at 15 Mount Vernon Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure. Extend the roof line of the existing house over the attached garage. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on a CESA map. 111 as lot 33 and lies within general residence B and historic districts. So who is here to present this? I am Cyrus Noble. Hello. Welcome. So this is uh, a plan that was approved prior, uh, but because of COVID supply chain and inability to get anything done. We weren't able to move forward on the project in the time that we were allowed with the approval. So we're asking to try again. No changes. Okay. You did say no changes, right? Well, given Joanna is <coughs> new, could yeah. you just give us a quick thumbnail of what, what you're proposing here? Um, in the lower right corner, uh, there is a bastardized garage this was originally a uh, barn a, actually a garage and that was a sliding barn door uh, and the basically the plan is to put a uh, master bedroom suite over that garage space this here so on the back, Lower you're also right. continuing a dormer. Is, is that right? Yeah. Here. Yes. Is, yeah. Here. Is there anything else? I see a door. On the back. Yeah. Uh, yes. The new door. That would be a new door into the backyard. So extending the, the dormer on the second floor, a new door, a dormer on the front, and obviously the half story over the garage. Right. Uh, this was it? originally submitted by the Schultheses who own the house. Uh, we purchased it from them. It was approved uh, for them. Uh, and then we asked for an extension and couldn't get the work done. And now we're back. <clears throat> Questions and comments on this? Anybody? 
I throw a comment out. Uh, this thing that's going to happen, that's proposed to happen, will be a unique house in the South End, I believe, certainly on this street. Um, and um, a house with a, with a continuous roof line and the front door of the house and the garage door oh, appearing sir. in the same plane. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, 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 it's not like I'm not sensitive to what's going on or, or can't picture the issue, but uh, it's, it's not how this is traditionally done. And so this is as a workaround. I just, I can't say, help you, I find it awkward. I find it awkward. I, I hope mine isn't the uh, deciding vote. Um, is there any other awkwardness felt in, by this board? <clears throat> I thought it did a job of, uh, a better job of balancing the house out. I thought it was awkward the way it was with the garage, old barn, and then just emptying in the back. Um, so I thought the design adds a little more symmetry. I agree. Martin? I don't have much. Yeah, it's it's an awkward house, and and uh, it's going to be an awkward house when it's done too. So I I don't. It's been pr approved before, and I feel like it would be inappropriate to not uh, allow it to to continue forward. I agree with the the fact that we're looking at difficulties in the supply chain and and that shouldn't uh, no one should be punished for that it's been three years so as far as the breathlessness that you're feeling here sir understood we've only owned the house two years well I do understand your picture I, but ours is a little bit different Simply say it is an ugly house. Could you come up to? Yeah, yeah. You, you have to come to the mic. Yeah. If you're going to speak. Yeah, we want to record your opinion about your house. It is an <laughs> ugly house, kind of. You walk down the street, you talk about awkward. It is awkward, and I would suggest that this is less awkward. Yeah. I I certainly appreciate your opinion. I get to sit here and have mine, right? Then nope. that's so you've heard mine. Now we've heard yours. Uh, Margo, you haven't given us an opinion. Well, I, I have a question for David, which is, what would you suggest? I mean, I, I don't think that there's a cheap way out. I'd love to think that I had one, but, but the slightly detached garage with a breezeway is the standard right. lingua franca of capes in New England. I don't think just Portsmouth. So the idea of this engaged garage, it makes for a thing that looks, you know, comfortable, uh, you know, in the back rows of Dover or something. Yeah, you, you've got to move the foundation to uh, No, uh, no I didn't say it was. No, I'm saying that, yeah. that, that that's, that's what's got to This happen. is what the sensitivity of, yeah. of the issue is. Yeah. I, I think it's clear, but I, I know what I would do. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I know what I would Even do. Even stepping it back would have been There's preferred. six different yeah. things, yeah. But, but none of them have to do with continuing a flush surface yeah. and then oh. glorifying it with a dormer. Yeah. Anyway. I would um, agree that it's awkward, but. Uh, may, I, may I just ask a few questions in trying to find a cheaper aesthetic um, solution? If the siding were on the garage, for example, were something different, like shingle, would that provide a visual separation for you that might be easy for the homeowner to achieve? Sure, it's a small hoop, but but yes, yes, it would separating the two from each other would do a bit to uh, make it look less purposely cobbled. And I see that uh, right in front of the garage, um, it's basically just pavement and there's a small planter area. Um, and what I would suggest is that the homeowner may be able to do something in that space between the corner of the garage and the corner of, and the door in the way of either plantings or uh, stone or something. Um, and with those two ideas combined, we might end up with something that gives a slight visual differentiation between the main house and the garage, 
without causing any major structural construction, increased expenses, and so on. Yeah. Getting some nods over here. Yeah, I may I speak. I, I feel like he's going to be doubly penalized because of the loss of time, which through no fault of his own, and the fact that he bought a house that's kind of awkward. I don't, and he wants to make it look better. I don't think it's his responsibility. And I'm a purist, but I don't think that it, it should be his responsibility to make it more historically accurate. His responsibility is to make it more aesthetically pleasing and not have to, you know, break the bank. Um, what would, what do you feel about the change of siding at that? Um, I think that would be a great economical way to do it. Yeah. Well, we're getting some enough nods here where I think we could make that a stipulation. You understand exactly uh, what we're referring to instead of clapboarding that thing? You're suggesting you see yeah, you have to come. Shopping? You have to come you're, back. You're going to have to come back up. So you're suggesting that cedar shake on the garage portion? Yes. Mm -hmm. It could. I Doesn't matter to me. Painted, painted the same color, and it just provides a textual difference. Yeah. Could leave it natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. As an old building. Mm, interesting. So. It is the purview of the owner. Yeah. Um, it, would anybody in the public like to speak about this proposal? Hey, Trujuda, 280 South Street. I received an abutter notice. Um, the abutter notice said they were extending the roof. Um, I guess my question here to you as a board is, um, do you really think this is consistent with the area over there and the historic district? Um, especially the dormer, just kind of sticking out there. And um, I, I guess I would ask if this already went through the BOA for any type of variances or anything, or anything is needed in that area because it's a really tight squeeze. Yeah, it would have gone through originally if it needed to. I, I don't know, does the applicant, do you know if it went to the BOA or needed to? Yes? Yes, it did. And are those permits still valid? Yes. Yeah, okay. they go with the property. Uh, not if you don't pull a permit. Yeah, go ahead. So that would be, um, I guess that would be my other question. Um, I guess the big thing is it's uh, it's really not consistent with the uh, the neighborhood area there. And that's what all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to close this public hearing. Um, look for a, a motion with stipulation discussed. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the application as presented. Um, I don't feel strongly about the stipulation, um, but I will, for the sake of harmony, um, would be willing to add that stipulation. Anyone? Second. Anybody? Oh, yes. Second. Seconded. Yep. Stipu right. is, is, is deciding that the uh, shakes on the is that the stipulation? Yeah. All right. I guess it is. I guess it is. Yeah. Uh, can you find some findings of fact or yes, anything sir. that could help us out on that? <laughs> yes, one? I can. I, it is consistent with. I believe it is consistent because it it is there. It, uh, you know, it, it wasn't consistent with the, the district in the first place, but it is part of the fabric that is there. Um, and it preserves the, um, the integrity of the district. So are those cedar shakes to be used on all three sides of the garage in the exterior wall? Sure. I'm asking because it's... You know, I, th I think to be consistent, yes. To be, okay. yes. Okay, that's it. Then uh, all those in favor say. Sorry, uh, what, what happens on the oh. dormer on the rear? Oh, that, well, that's that got to remain. Right that's got to remain the way the dormer is That's got to remain now. the way yeah, it is. Exactly. Just making yeah. sure. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. No, that's good. Keep going. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Against. All right. So you have your approval with the stipulation. 
Thank you. So now we are moving on to a work session. We're going to go down to the table. Requested by 1 Rains Avenue, LLC, 31 Rains Avenue, LLC, 203 Maplewood Avenue, LLC, owners. Property located at 1 Rains Avenue, 31 Rains Avenue, 203 Maplewood Avenue, wherein permission is requested to allow the construction of a five-story mixed-use building in a five-story hotel as per plans on file in the planning department. Said properties are shown on Assessor Map 1. 23 lot 14 map 123 lot 13 and map 123 lot 12 and lie within character district 4 and the historic district an introduction again <laughs> yes uh, good evening Carla Goodnight from CJ Architects here with Evan Tormey of XSS good evening <laughs> uh, well um, you grab that mic since no one's there yes yeah. so how's that and close to you yeah can you push that one over to her is he signaling you right no <laughs> okay you guys get powerful voice too close and we'll be hitting it um, so uh, we're back to concentrate mostly primarily on the design for the mixed-use uh, building and we've um, created a, a comprehensive summary of uh, all of our notes and thoughts on the hotel building from our last meeting um, on this the the uh, mixed-use piece we we um, really took a a holistic look uh, at the at the building and uh, divided up into two teams and uh, created two separate options with uh, a little bit of a um, uh, shift on, in each of them um, so that uh, you know we had we had been at, tasked with um, taking a harder look at that especially at the uh, flagship piece on Maplewood so um, Taking you right into the presentation on 1.0, just this is where we left off last time. So this is just to give you uh, some context of where we started, um, and uh, you know the prior design. Uh, in the prior design, both pieces were very similar, uh, and the cornices were, you know, lacked drama and so forth. Uh, 1.2 um, similarly you know we had some organizational issues in the uh, facade on rains uh, we had started a transition element between the two masses which I think conceptually was working but needed a little bit more development um, on 1.2 1 1.3 um, I we did like the uh, breaking of the corner and in this these new versions we had taken that um, in carried it through the uh, other balcony locations and uh, 1.4 we introduced a closer view um, there was some some uh, difficulty perceiving this view in the last presentation so we pulled that in um, and so that brings me to our um, updated option a um, so in option A, you can see that uh, we've included a new projecting cornice with uh, more clean modern lines and uh, varied the window pattern significantly and went with a lighter brick color, which um, is appearing slightly more lemony 
than I would really like it to be appearing right now. So it, just keep that in mind. Um, the uh, new uh, glass canopy on maple wood with that sort of jackknife design that we had talked about. And um, we retained the large glass canopy um, on Rains Ave. Uh, we also began to project the balconies 18 inches and ex accentuated the I-beam forms and kind of capped that top balcony with an I-beam, breaking the cornice at, at each balcony location. Um, and then we organized the window patterns to be a little bit more uniform and, and uh, cohesive. Um, and then introduced a divided light pattern in the double hung windows. Uh, and brick piers have been added to all elevations facing the North Mill Pond, which I think really sort of unifies the, um, the, the forms back there. Um, and then we also revised the upper, le upper uh, penthouse siding to be more of, a, of an earth tone. So if you look on 1.1a, that really showcases the, um, you know, it's a much more modern, modern departure. And it really showcases our um, jackknife canopy in that area. And you can start to see the piers on the back building, as well as the uh, increased cornice and details um, Details there. Uh, I think last time we, hmm? this view was not represented in our renderings. It was asked that you know, this being mm -hmm. a very important view coming into town on Maplewood. So mm -hmm. we've included it for each option, this view. So Good. it's. Yep. Um, so 1.2, again, this one really showcases uh, the uh, divided balcony areas and the uh, sort of more, much more ordered uh, sections of the building on rains. Um, and then you can get a really nice impression of how that courtyard works with the, with the uh, different, significantly different building type um, on the corner of rains at Maplewood. 1.3, uh, looking back uh, from 3S, <coughs> past the hotel. And 1.4, a close-up view, again, uh, really showcasing those pilasts, those, those piers um, applied to the facade, both along the back uh, facing the water side on the four-story elevation as well as the three-story elevation. Um, so, I'm not, I don't know if you want to go through all four, but why don't we do them in pairs? Want to do them in pairs? Sure. Uh, a so and B. And a and B sure. and then yeah, C and D. We just don't want to get too far ahead. So, okay. Yeah. So option B is a variation on A with um, a more dramatic corner element with a rounded balcony um, and a rounded um, a trellis form. Much of the rest of the building is the same. So if you go to 1.1, uh, you really get an idea. You can really see how that corner has been eroded, and we experimented with eroded corners um, to soften that turn around when you're coming in. Um, and then 1.2 gives you a different perspective on it. You know, really sort of changing the rectangular, you know, bookends around the entrance on 1.2b. And then 1.3 is essentially the same as the option A, because it's not that corner isn't visible. Uh, on 1.4B, you start to get just a little peek of it at the right. And then we move on to the next, next sort of whole scheme. Yeah. So, so, do we want to discuss this one? And we've got some changes. Yes. Yeah, quite a few. You know, yeah. We're asking Option. Some changes. So option we'd like to start. But all four options are the same. So no, this, no, no. The yep. next set is a different, completely different language. Style. Yeah. Style. Yeah. Yes. So the first two. Sort of are. Why does it make sense to talk about the first two if the second two haven't been presented? Well, it's up to you. I mean, I want to see all four myself. And okay. Then, then you get something to weigh it against. Otherwise, you're. What's okay. We just. No. Uh, um. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sometimes right. you want to plow all the way through, other times uh, kind of yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, option C. 
Option C is um, taking a different look at uh, reworking that inner uh, transition piece, the inner circle with um, a radius on that inside corner. So we introduced a round tower transition element between the three and four story buildings instead of and return, uh, reconstructed that outside corner that was there before. Um, we included the projecting cornice with corbels on the three story building forms and we added a strong metal entrance composition inspired by the hotel um, with the glass canopy at Maplewood. So it's proud instead of recessed. Uh, we simplified the storefront glazing in that area and uh, we, this one also has projecting balconies uh, with I-beam forms and organized window patterns and the divided light. Um, and the, we also added the brick piers on the back and um, revised the, the siding tone. But on this one, the Rains Ave um, entrance carries that same vertical form with the banding that is carried those that same banding is also carried through the the uh, round you tower the corbels? I, I, I just don't see them well here's go on 1.1 1. 1 C you can see what, uh, no. they're up uh, oh yeah mm-hmm 1.1 1. 1 C um, so these buildings are not as separated but they're just more highly detailed and um, more uh, sort of the the, the uh, form itself has been modified in these options to have the circular corner forms that um, really soften those uh, building uh, masses on the streetscape. So you can see here the simplified storefront. 1.2 shows the radial corner again with uh, the projected balconies and then the uh, entrance, the residential entrance, is also proud, uh, the same as the balcony, so that I-beam form carries across and also wraps into the circular form and then repeats again on the Maplewood side. And Which one is residential and which one of it is a storefront? The residential is the one on Rains and yeah, then... I see that. Yes. But there's two, sto two, two um, balconies there, I mean two Canopies. Canopies, and one of them is much heavier, <laughs> extending up to the fourth floor. What's that? That one is the residential. That's entrance. the residential. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. And are those um, balconies? Are they accessible from a hallway? Is that mm -hmm. how it works, or an elevator shaft? No. So there's a balcony associated with each unit, basically the way mm -hmm. this is oh, okay. configured. Mm -hmm. So you're just making them look like they're part of a central yep. hallway. Mm -hmm. Thing. Mm -hmm. okay. So Thank first you. floor, you have residential lobby there. That's your entrance, and then we're sort of emphasizing that entrance with bringing the additional detailing up along the balconies versus the more uh, mm -hmm. sort of subdued balconies elsewhere on the building. And that's just metal. Is that metal? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, One point three um, again just depicts the projecting balconies and the I beam accents. Uh, 1.4 indicates that we have uh, reworked the entrance um, from the water side to be coordinated with the other entries, the same style. And um, so option D is a variation on C, which introduces two uh, round forms, one on the inside corner, one on an outside corner. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, you can see the balcony uh, to the left and the um, added uh, entry area to the right. So the main difference between this one and uh, the, the first one is that, you know, it has introduced this um, outside corner kind of along the same theme as the previous. Uh, looking at 1.1D, again, uh, really gives you an idea of um, that second sort of eroded corner form. 1.2D, you can see the two forms together. Um, the inside and the outside corner. All other aspects are still remain the same. And then uh, 1.3, again, just the more organized uh, 
window patterns and storefronts uh, kind of more harmonious there. And 1.4D proposes again that we will retain that same sort of uh, I-beam banding with the vertical window slots and an, and an accent band that carries through the window glass and onto the siding itself. Um, and then 2.0 takes us to the hotel. Okay. okay. So all four different views, yep. two basic styles. With a variation. With variation. Mm -hmm. So, who wants to start discussing that? I'd, I'd be happy to keep on. No, you go ahead. The elements we asked for, at least I asked for, I'm saying here. Oh, good. I'm very happy with. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, the, uh, I think option A and option D are very appealing. I think option B is a little too alien for, mm -hmm. leave it at that. Um, what I do like about uh, option A, I think, is gives you that signature building on right there. Mm -hmm. where everyone's looking for sort of an entrance piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you pull that off. I, I like the fact that the cornices are very expressive. Mm -hmm. I, I also like the fact that you sort of changed the, the approach towards the way the building steps up. And maybe it's just color, but I think the cornices are a lot more appealing. And the whole, the whole thing has come together a whole lot uh, better than it was before. I like the fact that there's more transparency in option A, and and um, I what I do find appealing uh, about option D, I think, is how you handle the glue that there are the little hinge points where the mm -hmm. where that that front piece off of Maplewood meets the the piece on range. Mm. Um, I think those are much better than all the other options. I, I think you handle it much better in D than you do in, in, in the others. Mm -hmm. So if you could, you can convince me that A and D are, are the way to go. And, and mm -hmm. they're, in terms of massing, I think some of the things that you've done with the, with the horizontals and the cornice and everything mm -hmm. really give this building a, a more of a horizontal feel. And I think, you know, I wasn't, bothered by the massing in the first place, but you even improved upon it as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So A and A with a little bit of D involved would be the way I would go. Okay. Would you like to speak now? <laughs> Just to muddy the water some more. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I really like option B because you're you know, you've you've taken it in a completely different direction so that it doesn't feel boxy and like a, you know a, a, suburb of Boston where these mm -hmm. are going up everywhere it's 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 inviting <clears throat> when you've broken up the colors I mean maybe it's too lemony than what mm -hmm. it's really gonna be but I love how it's it, it feels more like a village now to me mm -hmm. um, I, I can't believe I'm saying it but I, I really do love this image thank you Um, I, I kind of uh, was surprised by that uh, as a little sense of uh, uh, post-war Japanese fenestration on the little mm -hmm. part that's presented to the um, the Maplewood um, an option B yeah. yes um, I, I something something seems to happen to the up the up the street corner uh, in option B that it gets fuzzy with the balcony I, I, I the balcony doesn't move me uh, it's so I, I guess uh, there's that um, I, I was also a, a not thinking that this was going to be the day we decided on something but they had a conversation mm -hmm. about it um, I as, as possibly trite as it is the little rounded corners mm -hmm. that was a, a well this is a demarcation from the rest of the things that you hold near and dear Dave um, and and it, it sort of had a little uh, exciting twang to it mm -hmm. um, you know like I don't know 
I'm not going to say any of the other things I'm thinking. Um, but uh, so I guess I'm a option A and option D sort of guy. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. liked elements of both of those, but we're really just talking about the piece on Maplewood, which granted is a huge piece of this thing. That probably weighs 50 percent of the problem, if not more. Um, and and so it's 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 a reason I think why mm -hmm. you are putting that as your first image in the presentation, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's still a you know I'm going to go with I don't know much about this just the idea that uh, making it look less boring uh, and massive for the rest of it is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I think that you've done that pretty much in all of them. Mm -hmm. taken, and I, there's something about that image to me that's just, it's actually inviting mm -hmm. to me. And, you know, we've come so far down this path at this point. I'm jumping in, you know, way late in the game. But, you know, we're down the path where we're not going to create a, you know, a replica of, of some of the mills that were torn down. You mm -hmm. know, we've gone in a complete completely opposite direction. So we might as well go all the way. Mm -hmm. I really, really like it. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Margo. So from an aesthetic point of view, mm -hmm. I would agree with Martin mm -hmm. in terms of uh, preferences. Okay. Um, while I find B to be interesting, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that it's it doesn't work with the rest of the building as well as I would like. Um, I've never I have not been a fan of the very busy storefront that you have below that, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the reasons that I find D appealing. Is I think you simplified that. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. I did. Um, I do like the idea of D rounding and softening the mm -hmm. entrance coming over over Maplewood. Um, some of the heavy projecting cornices <coughs> that you have in A, mm -hmm. um, I see where you're going and if this building were, if this part of the building were by itself, mm -hmm. I would probably be all for it uh, because I think it's very dramatic, but it doesn't seem to relate um, and sit well with the rest of, mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so having said those <coughs> things, um, you know how I feel about the mass of the building, um, sitting as close to the mill pond as it does. Um, and yet I haven't given you a solution to, to the problem. And I'm not sure that I have one, but I am going to uh, put forward some possibilities. If you could find a way to take a design such as D mm -hmm. and eliminate some of the mass on the third floor mm -hmm. so that we get more of this step back, that would help me. I'm not sure it's going to get me there the whole way because I don't know how you were going to do it and how much you could do. Um, but I, I've, we've heard a lot from the public mm -hmm. about the, this wall that this presents along that side of, of the mill pond. And I know because I'm a tree person that in 40 to 50 years, you could have mature trees in front of this building and the building will not stand out nearly the way it does today. But that's several decades of people who need to look at this building before those trees mask it. Mm -hmm. And so I continue to be concerned with that big face that's going to be viewed across the mill pond for decades, decades to come. Mm -hmm. um, you've, you've attempted to reduce that by having the step back on the upper stories, um, but they're not step back enough to make the building appear to be only a three-story building. Um, and it doesn't step back at the third story, it steps back at the fourth and fifth, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm counting the garage down below. Right, right, of course. Um, um, I just wanted to just 
we did actually, and we've been talking so much about design that we haven't sort of revisited this, but we have an actual penthouse up there. That is, this is three, uh, four stories with a penthouse. So, I, and I understand that there is a technical difference when it comes it's to things like the planning back. board and so on and <laughs> so forth. But I'm just looking at the aesthetic, and that yeah. is what I'm tasked with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to bring up a concern that was brought up early, but has in the in the chaff of everything else has I think been uh, overlooked. Is how this mill pond view is the backside of this building and it's a lot of garage at the single story level. Now happily the trees will cover that view first before they cover the upper stories um, but I am a little bit concerned that again the view from the mill pond is the backside of a house or the backside of a building um, and, and I, I feel for the people who are going to be looking at that. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a solution for you. I don't have a suggestion at all to help with that because, generally speaking, you usually have a front and a back. Um, but I, I think that for the sensitivity of the people who are going to be looking at that, we should we should mention it at least. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and there I've just it doesn't show up great in these renderings, but there is a berm that's been created uh, mm -hmm. between the pathways. So you have the pond. And then originally the pathway was pretty close to the pond. The Conservation Commission and the Planning Board asked us to move that out of the 25 foot. And so that got closer to the building. And then between that path and the building, there's a substantial amount of vegetation in the mm -hmm. plans. And then there is this sort of three or four foot high berm on top of which there is vegetation. So if you're on the, standing on the pathway, you're not seeing into this garage area. And if you're across the mill pond in somebody's house? Same. You're, you know, that's eight feet above the finished floor elevation of this building. Um, and then we also did introduce this, some screening uh, in a couple of areas in response to that same concern. We did have an exhibit in the earlier um, submissions that if you go back and look, it's in there, and we have all the berms sort of outlined in red. Yeah. Um, we we'd still do have 4.0 in here, which does show the setbacks, so the, mm -hmm. the 25, the 50-foot, and the 100-foot setback. And we we made a conscious effort as a development team to stay out of the 100-foot setback on this project. And so if you, you can see it here, there is one small area, and Dave, you'll be able to see it because you're right here, where... Your test is right there. On, <laughs> on the Maplewood frontage, uh, that is the only area where there is any building within the 100-foot floodplain. That's currently disturbed, paved area, Cindy and Cleaners. We're also up against a maximum setback on Maplewood Avenue where we would need a variance to change to more than 15 feet setback. So there's a small sliver there. Again, this is overall a net reduction in impervious, uh -huh. tremendous amount of stormwater management improvements. You know, this is all sheet flowing currently into the North Mill Pond. Um, so this would be a whole stormwater management system in here that would completely change the dynamic of the stormwater in this neighborhood. So not only are we staying out of the 100-foot setback, <clears throat> but this also, um, you know, we're proposing this community path. And this is an incentive that was put forth. I'm, I'm going you know too far. That's, you know that's not our purview. Yeah. Okay. So just it's a present. It's a little thing with a bow on it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, a two-story building in this location can just be built. There's no incentive to, you know, there's no incentive for that developer to put in a community path or a greenway or any of this community space. <coughs> and it would just be yep. unimproved. And, and there would be no public access. Yep. Uh, so uh, I just would like to say uh, everybody's made good points. And um, personally, I find that one of the problems with A and C. Uh, is the symmetry on the front of the three-and-a-half-story building. And that's what gives it, especially on A, uh, gives it an, almost a formal industrial look or um, an office building or rising from mm -hmm. the street. It just, it's too formal, that symmetry. So B upsets the symmetry um, with the um, what David would like to call the, the Japanese style. And I'm not really sure what design that uh, Frank roof is. Mm -hmm. Frank Lloyd Wright went through a little bit of it when we went to, to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the Tokyo Hotel. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> in the lobby. <laughs> yes. So uh, B, I feel is good that way, and I also feel that D is good. I, I like the rounded uh, mm -hmm. corners uh, on both sides. <clears throat> One's a corner, and the other one is um, the infill or what what makes the the, the transition from mm -hmm. the three story to the four story right there. I, I like that too. Um, I'm much more satisfied with the back of the building now. Mm. I'm thinking that you have added uh, enough details with the balconies, et cetera, and um, taking your word for the fact that the parking garage will be pretty well hidden. Um, so uh, that's mm -hmm. it for me. <clears throat> I, I like what you have done on D. Uh, by rounding that edge, coming around the street, you're not faced as we used to be as with a big industrial building. Mm -hmm. It's something softer and, and certainly more welcoming. And I applaud all the changes you've made, especially to the hotel and now to the uh, this building, to make it fit in better. But it's still right across the streets from a graveyard and historic homes. It's right across from the mill pine. And the great things you've done would fit so much better in the middle of, you know, by the AC t hotel or back there, but to be right on the edge of both history and the mill pine still makes it look too large. Okay. Too massive. Yep. Uh, do, you, do you want to do the hotel? Are there any changes to the hotel? Well, we've uh, captured the comments from last time. So I just want to sort of recap what I've heard on the mixed use um, and then move on to the hotel. So I think um, there's some appreciation for the more modern uh, form of A. Uh, the composition of D seems to be uh, more favored, uh, but possibly with a, a more modern uh, spin of A. Um, the three stories uh, that are wrapping that whole sort of Maplewood, starting on rains, hitting Maplewood, wrapping to the water, um, those three those three story forms. Um, are going to be significantly lower than, you know, all the buildings in that, in the, on the entire Bond Street block, uh, with the exception, of course, of 3S. Um, there, <coughs> it's it's pretty, um, uh, you know, it's three stories at, at the street. So I just want to make sure that we, it, you'll, you'll read that. Um, and then it goes to four. Uh, with the penthouse at the back. So, um, I think our challenge is going to be to s combine the, some style elements and, and them uh, Shake them up. composition. Does that sound <laughs> like a potential path? All right. Um, moving on to 2.0. When we spoke last time, there was uh, a consensus that um, this scheme with the uh, this was option C, I think. Option C, yeah. Referring to it. Yep, had the uh, textured brick banding um, and the more significant uh, hotel metal composition at the entrance that also carried around to the corner facing Market Street. So moving on to 2.1, uh, you can see those textures a little more clearly in the uh, depiction there, as well as so we've sort of just developed and brought everything up to a little bit more uh, detail. 
2.2 shows the uh, the corner and the, the metal composition there and we've included all the details from that now so that you know you've all you can have uh, plenty of opportunity to you know go through and, and um, uh, review that 2.3 was the view from uh, across the pond that everyone appreciated uh, with, again, the metal elements really breaking things up and uh, starting to modulate that form with the uh, gray brick change um, at the, uh, you know, as, as the, uh, you approach the water and it steps down. And maybe that's sort of more what you're looking for in the mixed use as well, something that is um, not, you know, not quite as much of a departure, but still a definite change. Um, 2.4 gives you a closer look at that with, again, the details um, in both the brick, uh, horizontal brick uh, recessed areas at the base and then um, the textured brick in the banding. Um, and 2.5 is that the view across from the in, from the entire pond. So then, well, getting into 3.0, we're into materials. I don't could I ask you a question? Sure. On 2.3. Mm-hmm. So looking at the hotel from the pond. Yes. And then over on the left is the yes, ACS. and AC Hotel. And what's yeah. this one? What's this? Is this one? No, what's 145 Maplewood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm no, all the way over all here. The Carl is out of view. That's, that's I'm all the way over there. Yeah, that's... Um, I know what's in there. Yeah, so 145, I think, is, oh, it's is the four angle stories, is a but it's actually taller assumed, than either of these buildings. I assume the Heinemann building was over more no. towards the right. right. Well, 3S is not reading three very three well okay. there. That's why it's just yeah. sort of... It's the oh, JPEGs are not reading. That, mm -hmm. That's where they want to put the mural on that wall of 3S because it is pretty blank right now. <laughs> yeah, it's just some block. Beth, Beth wants to dress that up. I know that. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Nick, can you go to the uh, the view that had the total um, across the pond view? 2.3? Yes. 2.5. Oh, and that's so option, obviously option A in, uh, in the right. one series. <laughs> mm-hmm. Regardless, I'm seeing what appears to be five buildings. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just throwing it on the tape. We're supposed to take something from that? <laughs> it meant a lot to me. Oh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Not everyone gets it. Okay. No, I, I, just I, the, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, um, I would like to say that... Uh, as far as the um, what's across the street, um, yes, it's uh, the historic buildings. There's three or four. Uh, one of them is actually new, but it's a two-story. It was built as a two-story. Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, the uh, cemetery is ways. It's down. You know, it's uh, more across from the former Portsmouth Herald building. I'm not mm -hmm. even sure who's in there now, but that uh, two-story building that held the Portsmouth Herald at one time. So we do have the Heinemann's building uh, also between the Herald building and this project. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we, this building uh, is pretty much surrounded by similar mass massing buildings with the exception of the three S. And, and I think too, the cemetery is across the street, if I'm not mistaken, from the Russell Street project that was approved, which is yes. I think mm -hmm. much, much larger than this. Or what he said, yeah. mm -hmm. which is the Portsmouth Herald. Yeah. 111 Maplewood, not Russell. But it's, it's much more proximate to the cemetery than this project. Um, Kenny, Kenny, uh, Cor Kenny uh, Corner, I wouldn't it's, it's across the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think that's a good point. Yeah. So, um, it's because uh, people have mentioned uh, B a number of times with that um, rather exotic. Is that something that everybody is in agreement of? Because I would hate to see them think, oh, B, yeah, and come back and base your whole project on B. Um, mm -hmm. what, does, what does some other people? I know that you yeah. like that. David was. It, it's a presentation to the street. 
Yeah. Uh, so are you saying because it's a presentation that's too strong? No, I, I no, I, I, I find, I find one of the, the tiny parts of this yeah. whole thing that I think I can wrap my head around. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. Kind of okay. yeah. I, uh, I, I, my first impression wasn't. It's exotic looking, so maybe that's the Japanese. But to me, it's got sort of a spiky road warrior kind of quality to it. That <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'm not sure that. You know. Um, and, and Margo mentioned that again. If if you were to do this, you, you want to see shades of it throughout the complex, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then, you know, I don't know what that would look like. That would that might be another six months worth of uh, <laughs> meetings. We should put three teams on it. No, I I think that um, I think what you're seeing there that you like is the bit of further reduction of you know what what we talked about last time where you had a pretty big square you know you had a, a wider square piece right. um, and we have brought it down to three stories so that does make it appear wider and squattier um, in the previous submissions and so eroding that corner gives it just a better balance and proportion but it's more than that because and if you compare it to it. D, yeah. you've done this basically mm -hmm. what you just described, but it just feels like a, a huge battery or a spaceship mm -hmm. that's going to take off versus this looks like you can, it just, it mm -hmm. looks human, it looks livable. Mm -hmm. It has some textures and different things happening. Yeah. Um, it could be maybe just calm down a little bit. Maybe that's what you're looking for. I'm not, but I can see it. <laughs> Road Maybe that's what your, your associates are looking for. Yeah, because like I said, we're so far out of the box already. You might, as, you might as well make the most of it. And I know it's a million, there's a million opinions, but we're so far beyond anything historic. I, coming late to the game, I can't even believe that this was ever approved. It's like, can we rewind the clock a couple decades? But this, we're, here we are. And I think mm -hmm. you're really trying to make the most of it. Well, and, and one of the messages that I've been hearing, having, you know, spoken with you all so many times, is that, you know, quality materials, quality windows, quality, you know, no vinyl, all vinyl's gone, you know, use bricks, use, you know, some stone or precast or, you know, really b bigger corners with details and corbels, and you know, maybe not there, uh, you know, but, but really, uh, amp up the, the quality of the materials you're using to create the compositions as well as the compositions themselves, which we've tried to do here. All this metal is certainly going to be significant. So this um, uh, on uh, B again, this is not really a canopy on the front corner. Right now it's, it's, it's uh, up on the fourth, the, above the third floor balcony. It's, it, it, does it have glass on it? Is it does it? not. It's more like a pergola it's, sort of. It's, it's, a pergola. it's open yeah. to the air. It's yeah. open to mm -hmm. the sky above. Yep. Yeah. And that's similar to what exists on the Heinemann building. There's a rectangular wooden pergola thing. There are some thing like that they put over Maplewood Avenue. Type thing. Mm -hmm. Which I must admit, the Heinemann building, everybody talks. And, and the Heinemann's building, I think, is probably bigger than this one. But everybody mm -hmm. says, it is. I like that Heinemann building. Okay. <laughs> Trying to figure out where they're coming from. You know, mm -hmm. it's a little confusing sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I do feel that you have added some details that are okay. doing some good here. So, yes, Margo. Uh, just a, a side comment about the Heinemann building. I, th I think the size of the Heinemann building is successful because of its location, away from the mill pond. Mm -hmm. And it was stepped down to uh, be sensitive to the buildings across the street. But mm -hmm. you're headed where my brain was headed. I saw your drawings over there, <laughs> where you're taking elements of B and putting it onto the simplicity of D. Because one of the problems I have with B is this feeling of um, rectilinear base. Oh, look at that world. Then. Yeah, <laughs> rectilinear base with this right. cantilevering almost curved right. element, yeah. where yeah. I think to some extent D was more successful to me because mm -hmm. you didn't have that um, opposition of form. 
Mm -hmm. But jazzing it up a little bit, I would not be right. opposed to. Which we happen to be sitting next to the jazz man. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz. So maybe yes. something where the success of B is that there's balconies, there's some projection on that corner. Mm -hmm. D maybe is too simple for some in that area. So is there some combination where we, we take, well, we're on D here, but if you go, go to, I mean, we're on B, if you go to D, there is a sort of a railing at the top of that. Mm -hmm. And if that is sort of brought down and mm -hmm. we wrapped a, a balcony around that corner at two and three that might, you know, connect into Maybe. the balcony that's there uh, within the brick. It, you know, could introduce more of the what we see in in I B. I think the two compositions D. could be very easily combined. And your CAD lesson will begin tomorrow. <laughs> I, 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 I really think what's important, you know, whether or not we all like the, the balconies on B and such, is that you have managed to make that section of the building look like it has less mass. It's smaller mm. looking, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, you, you take in yeah. that um, center door with the windows on each side of it, and it's three stories block high, and, and mm -hmm. you've taken that away. I feel that's good. I think the proportions are better. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your opinion. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, you do. Not one you want to hear. <laughs> you do. I mean, we're here. We can't go backwards. So what do you think we should do? I think you should hear from the public. OK. Uh, would anybody else like to speak some more, though, before we hear? Just well, you know, one more thing. Yeah, maybe that is the what B is doing. I just feel that the language in B is more appropriate up against 3S. Mm. in raw rusted metal mm -hmm. and that's to me that has a quality that's not urban sophisticated mm -hmm. it's more urban edgy mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know it, it just looks raw like 3s and i'm not sure that that i i, I can't buy into b and i'm kind of shocked that there there's interest in b but yeah so I'm, yeah. I'm, I have to agree with you. I'm D all the way. B looks heavy metal. Yeah. It doesn't seem to belong on the corner. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised, but I just want to double check. Nobody's forgotten that the mass of this building is too big mm -hmm. for me. It's not too big. In this location, for the for the architectural style, and if this were building were not sitting where it were, I would completely agree with you. I would get behind this building if it were anywhere but right there. Mm -hmm. If this was a story shorter, it would look squatty and inappropriate for this area. From from all sides or from, from all, all sides? It would look squatty and inappropriate. This is a historic environment. It should not be two stories. It'll look like a strip mall. I, It'll look awful. I do not support three story, uh, two stories. Well, I'm but just saying. There's, there's something in between. And this this is, the, it's uh, the Papa Bear, Mama Bear thing. One's too big and one's too small. I'm not suggesting that two stories is appropriate here either. But this is a little bit too big. I disagree. Any other uh, comments? Fine. But they've obviously been approved. See, that's the thing. If, if something had happened earlier in the process, we no. wouldn't have to have that discussion. This has not been approved. What you, no, this, so, this isn't approved. Um, but I mean, this complex, they've jumped through. See, I'm the late. The planning board yes. approval yes. is complete. Yes. See, that's what I'm. That's so, what but the, the thing, Joanna, is that our purview with regard to mass for the historic district trumps. Okay. what is permitted okay i'm on a learning curve yeah. so that no. that's what i so we as clears up a lot as the hdc we have the ability to say despite what planning allows okay it is not appropriate for Good this particular know. site or this particular architecture or <coughs> this particular context okay so if that's it then um, i think i have one other thing but i go ahead sir. oh can we just we do a quick 
A, B, C, D, or you could also say B plus D, A plus C, yeah. whatever. Because I, I think I got it, but if we went around and around. So can we, get, or A plus B plus C okay. plus D? I think that's fair. It, yeah. Can oh. you B? It would be A minor B, a uh, minor D. Okay. Okay. I'll do D all the way. Okay. I'll do B and D. Okay. D it's too big. It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Any style? From a style point of view, D with alterations. Okay. Thank you. And it's a simplified a D and B. Okay. All righty. So I'm going to allow the public to speak on this work session. <clears throat> if anybody would like to introduce themselves and give some words. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Page Trace, 27 Hancock Street. Excuse me, Page, but you're going to have to move that microphone. Because there. You're lost in the... Better? Yeah, that's better. Somewhere. Let's... There we go. Um, thank you, Carla. That's a, that's a lot better. Oh, good. A through D, anything is so a lot better. So what is better. your A, B, B, C? Um, <laughs> it, it's difficult to see it back there, but either B or D. B, D. Um, but... I would say I'll throw a curve. Why does the hotel have to be five stories in a straight line? Why can't the hotel be a bookend to the mixed-use building? Um, I assume it's going to be a tremendously successful hotel. Um, and creating this as a, as a second bookend makes people want to stay somewhere a little different than the AC hotel, which is just sort of, okay, it's great, it's modern, it's gray, it's, it's fun, but give them something else to think about staying in, a round room, cornered room, something they want to pay for. So maybe it, uh, if you go to i don't know which one the japanesque one was where we were doing a little b, b. b. um b. There. Oh. there it's a little strange yeah. it's a little different but maybe that's where people might like to stay um so if you flipped that and bookended it I don't know whether the numbers would work. I don't know whether it would be too costly to build, but it might be a little bit different for down there. <coughs> it might give you, I agree with Margo, unfortunately, the mass on the mill pond is just too large. But in an imperfect world, maybe bookending the two buildings might give everyone the the mama bear the baby bear and the in-between bear <laughs> but thank you for taking all of our probably less than generous comments the last go round to heart mm -hmm. and actually coming up with something thank you good evening liza hewitt 726 middle road um, the city's master plan calls for two and a half story buildings along the North Mill Pond. The zoning ordinance allows for two to four stories, and these developers have decided to build buildings with five stories, I guess, because they are leaving open space in the 100 foot wetland buffer, which you can't build on anyway because of its proximity to the water. The architect and developers have ignored some of the HDC members and resident concerns about height and mass. I really don't feel that rounding the corners is going to take care of that. I'm sorry, um, do you think we won't notice <laughs> that the buildings are still five stories? Please make them follow something that resembles the master plan. It was developed for a reason. Thank you. <clears throat> Good
Good evening, Duncan McCallum, 536 State Street. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add to what I said uh, the last time. The developers have come forward uh, tonight and made some tinkering changes, but they haven't addressed the real problem, which this, this these buildings are just too big. They are out of place. And they are too massive. They're inconsistent with the character of the downtown area. They are inconsistent with the character of the North Mill Pond. They are in, especially, they are incon, uh, inconsistent with the scenic character of the North Mill Pond. They just don't belong there. I mean, it's that simple. They can make all the piddling changes they want to, but it doesn't solve the real problem. They're too big. They don't belong. They should be disapproved. Thank you. Huda, 280 South Street. Um, this is the historic district, and I really appreciate that you took the advice last time, and this, the appearance steps back, but you step back into that upward five stories again. Um, I guess I would ask in, I think it was view D with that glass thing there um, about the, um, the, the materials being used don't really seem to fit the historic district or the historic nature of that area. Um, it's more, my opinion, uh, industrial. And I think we still have the massing here. I agree with Margot on most of her points. Um, the opportunity here is to um, step it back. I think you've taken that opportunity on this side. And uh, I would also agree with uh, Ms. Trace about um, especially the hotel. The hotel, from what we saw, looks like a big block to me. And uh, doing something different here and blending it in and giving it some balance um, would make it more attractive, in my opinion. Thank you. Good evening, Esther Kennedy, 41 Pickering Ave. And I want to re one, thank everyone for their hard work tonight. Um, I guess I was a little taken back by a comment that you made, sir, that if we don't do this, we won't get our path. Um, I hope that that isn't the answer. I hope we're here to work together and come up with a good plan. Um, <clears throat> a long time ago, we talked about stepping down to different things. And I've heard Commissioner Wyckoff say that when I sat on the ACC, and I've heard others. And I guess I do believe the massing's too big, and I don't know if there's any way to step it down. As we look at the water and look around there, those some of our older houses that are in that area. Um, I think our master plan does call that we think of our buffer zone and I do believe that has not been totally looked at yet. Um, <clears throat> but the ACC does have the right to look at massing. And when I sat on the ACC for the two and a half years, um, we did a lot of look on the massing. Um, these buildings, whether they're 30 years, which I was told one of the buildings that was built over in this area was only a 30 year building, but whether they're 30, 50 or 100 year building, as Commissioner, as Margo said, um, people are still going to have to look at it for a long time for the vegetation to grow in. And I want to look at another building called Port Walk. When that building was being looked at, we were promised all this vegetation that was going to be on the greenery, on the walls, and it was going to keep looking amazing, and it was going to cover up a lot of things. Um, I venture to have you all drive by there because that is not happening. The thing about vegetation is it can be very um, changed, and if it's not kept up, it doesn't cover what it says it's going to cover, and there's a lot of what-ifs in it. So I would encourage you, um, though I like vegetation and I like what, was her what we heard tonight, 
I would encourage you to really think about the structure and make it right without the vegetation and then think of the vegetation as a positive after the effect. Um, I always find it's interesting with these kinds of pictures we put a lot of vegetation in it and what are we truly trying to cover up? The mass. <clears throat> so as you go forward I hope you do keep your mission in mind and look at the massing. I also think that I've heard some of you say talk, in the past talk about stepping down and I really believe we're stepping down to a waterfront and what does that look like? Um, but I do not believe we need a spaceship as one of the plants seem to um, look like. Thank you. Okay, so we've heard from the public. Uh, you've heard from us and the public. Mm -hmm. And um, when do you want to come back, I guess? Next week. month. Next month. Next month. January. Yep. Yep. You know, Next week might be a little soon. Right. Yeah. Make a motion to continue till January. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right. <coughs> Before we adjourn, certainly. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, for the benefit of people who have not been on the commission long enough to go through the annual process that we go through in January, could Nick review um, how how that works? The the appointment of the decision on who leads us and so on. Um, other than the fact that the rules of procedure for the historic commission require, yeah. like every other land use board in January, the officers of the board to be elected by the board itself. So mm. the chair and vice chair are elected in January of each year, for generally the first meeting of the year. John, did you have any thoughts on how that process would happen? Um, in the past, we have had um, secret votes with torn paper or something like that, <laughs> where we have. Um, and I think that's essentially how, how, um, how it probably should happen. Um, I would just like to say that um, I feel comfortable as the chairman and I feel as being on this board for 17 years that um, uh, this is my last go round. So I just feel that um, I would continue to be the chair. I mean, I would like to continue to be the chair and I would like to put the board in any um, whichever direction they want to go. I don't feel that I'm, my job is to set a direction. My job is basically just to keep the meetings going and, uh, you know, read the proposals. <laughs> um, so that's how I feel about it. So we do have to do it next month, however. Can I say something? May I say something? Mm. Um, uh, I apologize for not doing more homework, and I plan on getting much more conversant with these. Hold the mic over. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 I don't want it to be. You, you have to. You have, have to. to. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're still on TV. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, my feeling is when you said that your job is to push things forward. Um, the, if we know that we have the veto power. And we all feel that the massing is so great. Why don't we just, I'm not saying this is what we should do. This is really a question. Why aren't we just not going to these people and saying, back to the drawing board. It's too big. You have to cut it down to two and a half stories. Why are we? I can I, answer that, I think. Is it, is it fair to discuss this project without no. that? No, the I, no. So she's giving a hypothetical. A hypothetical, I think, yeah. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I, yeah, so I, I just feel general, like I've been a little in the dark. Is, we've closed that particular. No, that's all right. We're not just talking general. about the prior yeah. applicant. In we've general, and the master. Of big buildings have been built. And where, the city's master plan, yes. and, well, and what the veto power is of this committee. Yes. So th this commission has jurisdiction over the scale, height, and massing of any structure in the historic district. Mm -hmm. The zoning ordinance sets sort of the min and the max in the case of the downtown zoning because there's buildings that are, are required to be at least two stories. Mm -hmm. 
and they go as high as, as five. And it depends where your property is located. But if you're in a location that the zoning ordinance allows you to have a four-story building, such as many of them in the north end. The zoning also allows you to get a fifth floor if you provide certain incentives like workforce housing or open space to the city. However, the HDC, if it finds a building uh, is too large, too tall, um, and too out of scale with its location and its context, you're not obligated to approve the maximum theoretical volume, height, scale, and massing mm -hmm. of a building. So I can tell you from past practice, when larger projects come before the commission, they come through many meetings, generally many work sessions, and beyond understanding the context, which is step one, not talking about how big the building is, but where is it being proposed to be located? Is it over where the AC Hotel is? Is it on Russell Street, Port Walk, down on the end of State Street next to the bridge? The first step is to look at the neighborhood context to see what the scale, massing, volume, and even the styles are uh, of what's around it. The second step is to get into a massing discussion, just with cubes, blocks, no articulation of openings, texture, in order to determine whether the massing is appropriate for that location in that context. Then you get into the stylistic. Uh, is it modern, is it contemporary, is it traditional? And then you work towards the details of the preferred style. Now there's nine people that sit on this commission. Although this commission likes to move towards unanimity, it's not a requirement. Applicants only need four votes of the seven voting members to have an approved project so you're going to hear, when you sit here, plenty of dissent. Mm -hmm. There are dissenting opinions. And when you're working through a, a long-term set of work sessions, it sometimes is tricky for the applicant to know exactly what to do, which is why we try and summarize when we're done a discussion looking at options where a majority of the commission has landed because it doesn't mean the minority opinion is discounted, but it, it may not get what it wants. So. But in this hypothetical discussion we're having of a hypothetical yes. project, it seems to me that the majority opinion is that there's too much massing. Well, I, I would only say without wanting to talk about the project, <laughs> yeah, I don't think don't that's know correct. That. Okay. Don't know. I, you know, and you have to at least accept, even if you don't like the outcome. I can tell you the project that just left has probably had no less than 12 oh, work I sessions. Know. I know. And I tried to describe to you what we follow for a sequence of events, and I can tell you the last three to four months, if not more, has been focused on the details. Right. N that doesn't mean massing. You can't, you can't back up a little bit, and there are members that are still stuck on step two and, and can't get beyond it, the yes. massing. Can we let David yeah. talk here? I'm not a professional in the, tr in the trades, so I thank you for your, your very direct words. There's another thing underlying all of this, which is they have the right within 30 days to go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment and have the decision of the board overturned. And the Zoning Board of Adjustment, you're speaking to a 22-year veteran here, okay. does not share the sensibilities that this commission okay. practices. That's another and you question. certainly, just on a practical level, just between two of us, mm -hmm. nobody else, you don't want somebody else that is not sharing your sensitivities making decisions that override you. Okay, and so keeping that foot on the throttle, mm -hmm. but feathering it back every now and then. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to okay, read your clients, sense. read the project. It's come a long way, but the battle still will get shifted to a board that you have no control over. And it's a humbling damn event to sit in one of those damn chairs and watch it happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? I understand. Yeah. Well, I'm, right. Thank you again. This I, is, I'm learning. Trying to be candid here. No, I'm, I appreciate it very much. And, and remember, the, the discussion tonight is missing several people. Mm -hmm. So Karen isn't here, and, and Rich isn't here, and, and Reagan isn't here. So what you're hearing now is mm -hmm. not as representative of mm -hmm. the full rainbow. Right, and I'm trying to speak in the hypothetical. Right. Yep. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, John, thank you for your 
your comments on, on um, the process and, and where we might go and what you're thinking about. Um, and so my question is, um, after next week's meeting, would there be an opportunity for us perhaps as a group to discuss what we feel is important in a chairperson so that if anybody is interested in saying, huh, I'd like, I'd like to be considered, that people will understand what that entails. That could happen on in January. I, I would like to say that that has never happened. I have never heard that. I've never heard um, a separate separate talk mm -hmm. uh, with everybody giving what they want to see uh, in a chairperson or whatever. It's been, you know, it happens in January, and that's all I can say. Can someone nominate another person or nominate themselves? Well, sure. Definitely nominate yeah. another person. Certainly. Yeah. And, but I mean, my my point is that at that point you you sort of people have been put forward and okay, so nobody's had a nobody's had a chance to. I realize that you are trying to be sympathetic, and you know to me in how you're presenting that. What I'm trying to say is that I find it very difficult to walk into a meeting where I need to make a decision, having had no opportunity whatsoever to give it. Research, thought, consideration? I've never heard that comment before. Either. I think it's, um, I, don't I don't know what to say. I just. Um, Our requirements are not actually procedural rules, they're yeah. just requirements. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And um, as I said, the chair's job is basically to run. The meeting it is not to set an agenda. It's not to, uh, uh, you know, push the count, uh, the commission in one direction or the other. It's just to run the meeting and let the members talk. And if I feel I need to make a comment, then I do. But it's um, that's why it's uh, one of the things. At the many years ago, when Mr. Almeida um, came forward, um, was his penchant for you know lively discussion, and he had to realize that as the chairman, you're not in the mix immediately. It's up to you to let everyone else talk. John, would you not say that? There is work beyond this evening that occurs with the chair that a person with background would be, the city would benefit from a person with a professional background in the, in design and in construction, <laughs> in these things, in preservation, so that that should be kept in mind when it's not just to run the meeting. There is other well, things outside of the meeting. Yeah, and um, I have been involved in those types of discussion, and I would like to say that you have to be careful as the chair um, what you say. As a matter of fact, you cannot at that point, um, I would think, be involved in any public discussion as far as uh, writing into the paper or any of that sort of thing. It's just not appropriate. <clears throat> for the chair of a uh, quasi-judicial group to, uh, you know, have that power to do that. Um, it, it's just not right. Um, all I can say is, um, to me, that, that uh, it, the discussion is, is, is good, um, but I feel similar to, for instance, a Somebody in the police department, for instance, who's a lieutenant, and all, all of a sudden he's he's been made a captain. So he's the captain for one year, and then the police department says, uh, yeah, you're not going to be the captain anymore. You're going to go down to the lieutenant again. How would that person feel? So that is how I'm going to feel, I think, um, as going back to a lieutenant. And um, 
it really shortens my term on this board. That's how I feel. So, Nick, what are the are there additional requirements of the commissioner, out, the chairman, outside of running the meetings that people who might be interested need to know? Meetings with you, meeting, you know, what other what other things are going to take up time that somebody who might be interested needs to know about? Because we don't see that. Yeah. Well, the primary thing is we always have a pre-meeting today. Okay. Yeah, monthly meeting to go over the agenda, go over the applications. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, that's definitely a monthly meeting and then there are as needed meetings throughout the, the year but that's the primary function mm -hmm. there's certainly the opportunity when we're working on a grant application working on zoning amendments to coordinate with that person uh, offline between meetings and um Administrative things like in 2000, was it 2017 that the design standards were rewritten? Is that who, who decides or to that suggest? Was a, that was the whole, whole commission. Yeah, we did that okay. yeah. commission wide. Yeah. But I mean, who brings forward those ideas? Anybody well, on the commission? Well, obviously, the, the commission at that time, it's a meeting. The, the commission uh, requested the chair represent the commission in front of the city council for the appropriation to to secure the funding to do that okay. the chair coordinated with me on the issuance of an rfp to get the selected consultant mm -hmm. and then the full commission uh, worked with me and that consultant to prepare those design guidelines same sort of event with the 3d massing model well, there is some representation in front of the city council when we have an appropriation or a zoning amendment. We haven't had one for a while, mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely in the past been a, a role for the chair on behalf of the commission. Mm -hmm. So there's more than just running the meetings. Yeah, Margo, core are function you interested is running. In being the chair, I, I I want to find out what's involved before I say anything about about that, but. I have run meetings in the past. I felt comfortable doing it. But I don't like to walk into things blindly, and I don't want to elect somebody to a position if I don't understand fully. I mean, I understand what I see. I understand what I saw Vince do. I understand what I see John do. But there's stuff I didn't know. I didn't know about the monthly meetings. You know, I don't know what role the uh, a chairman might play if we talked about um, going back and reviewing large infill projects, for example. You know, who brings forward those ideas? Who carries that idea? Who organizes it? I'd, I'd like to, I just want to know. I think usually as far as, you know, reviewing, um, we have had, uh, Nick has actually uh, brought that forward to uh, discuss some of the changes and, you know, that sort of thing. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we, one thing we did, I mean, I've been, I've been sitting here for 11 years. Uh, I think for the first six or seven years, we would take the opportunity in January. Well, first of all, there were cycles before. Uh, maybe we're entering one here with a little more breathing room. It's only 830 and we're having this conversation, which yeah. is a big relief. It's, it's been a cool. while. There's an opportunity for us collectively at least once a year to chart a course for things we want to do that are go beyond just reviewing applications so we can get ahead, deal with the spider web of HVAC stuff on the outside of the building. We've talked about that. You're here. Making it a priority and for me to on your behalf to work on that, bring it back, have a subcommittee. I mean I, I definitely we have a working list that needs some attention. Uh, and I probably need some help in order to move through it. We got the, the certified local government application ready for the city council, but that, that took a lot longer than it probably should have. Um, so, yes, there are, we used to have an annual meeting quite a few years ago where we would dedicate a couple of hours to mapping out things like that we'd like to get done. We rewrote all the, uh, together, the exemptions and went from 12 to 23 
Um, we just did a zoning amendment for the building height, which includes a disclaimer, a very explicit statement, making clear the jurisdiction of the HTC and that an applicant shouldn't misconstrue the code as the theoretical max being the min. Mm -hmm. And it says very clearly now in the ordinance, as of a couple of months ago, that the HTC has full jurisdiction over the height, massing, and scale of the buildings in respect to the building height. Now, and again, David's not wrong. You, you can't do it stupidly if there's a two to five story limit you're going to be very hard pressed to, to defend a two-story cap, but just because it says two to five doesn't mean you're you're stuck with five. Yeah. So you you're going to have to build a case yeah. uh, of the context, the site, the massing of the building, as to where you're comfortable as a group between two and five. Mm -hmm. Probably right. closer to five than two. Yeah. Uh, I, can I ask another question? And I, I, I feel so ignorant, I really need to do my homework, but is there any interface between the, this master plan and the zoning and planning? Of, yes. So does it have any teeth, or is it just a well, guideline? Well, the master plan is supposed to, I mean, when people go to the mic and mention master plan, it's really important to differentiate between specific plans, like the North End Vision Plan, which is it, you could construe it as a master plan. It's a, it's a master plan for a very targeted area versus the master plan for the whole city, which is a separate document, which has a lot of high-level goals, objectives, and policies, and an action plan with implementation strategies, some of which are zoning amendments, okay. but not strictly. Some of them are funding objectives. Mm -hmm. Some of them are projects. Um, so ideally, the code is, is the, the master plan is translated into the code. So when we did these charrettes, these vision plans for the downtown originally, then the north end, then the west end, separate planning processes, three, four day charrettes, build a vision plan. The next step is to translate that into the code. And you translate it, people draft it, then it goes through the city council, in some cases the historic commission, but the planning board and the city council are primarily responsible for code amendments. Code amendments are done in a public process. They get adopted. They're supposed to be consistent with the master plan or in the case of those three areas, those specific plans. So I would argue there's there's a lot of imperfections between the, the wide variety of so-called master plans and the code, but to a large degree, they're consistent. And it doesn't mean everybody's interpretation of each of those is the same. And the North End Vision Plan is an excellent example where you can see some illustrative drawings that are, to many eyes, very inconsistent with the code that's envisioned by the same author on the next page. Uh, all the building heights in the North End in the Vision Plan are higher than what's in the zoning ordinance as an as of right scenario. Wow. And that's in the same document you hear many people say, it's two and a half stories, it's one story. There are areas that have lower buildings and there was a preference to stepping uh, from the water up to the edge, not just for the one we just talked about, but the north end. Uh, but the way the zoning was uh, construed was to bring the heights down and then have them go back up with the public benefits of either workforce housing so, so again, it's not it's not that nuanced. I think it's fairly clear, but obviously it isn't clear to everybody because we we hear a lot of critique of what the North End Vision Plan means and doesn't mean, and how how the code translated that. But there's room for improvement is the bottom line. But we're not we're not in two different worlds. Mm -hmm. um, the whole business of development within. 100 feet of a, a water body or a wetland. That is not crystal clear as to what the city's ordinances say you can and cannot do. So there's, you hear a lot of debate, and I think it's fair that the community revisit the, the vision and the code and get it to be clearer so we don't have such uh, divergent opinions on the same language, because we've clearly arrived to that point in the last couple of years. Code hasn't changed for a long time.
and it's been done a certain way for a long time, it, it appears to be no longer supported by a lot of people in the community, what we've been doing for a long time. So it's time to revisit it. And it really starts with the city council and them deciding to review that and initiate that planning process. So I know I'm digressing, but it's important no, no, given it, how much we hear. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's, there's work to be done. There's not much left in the north end <laughs> that hasn't been built on that would be affected by any kind of future ordinance that might lower the height. I mean, maybe some of the areas along Deer Street where those buildings haven't haven't happened yet, but you know, there, there really isn't much left, unfortunately. And West End Yards is... The whole thing goes back to the 1970s when they tore everything down. That's where it all started as far as these these structures go. And, and the reality is, is, is most of these buildings in the North End are not, we're not demoing, we're not taking out a historic structure exactly. and placing this giant thing. Exactly. That these were yeah. just all either vacant or underutilized or that type of lot, you know, they were yeah, parking. Yeah, that's a whole different ball game. Parking right area. So if there is new development, you know, we're in the right area, the North End, not Daniel Street. <laughs> you talked about it, more education, uh, bringing experts in. Were you saying that might have been Reagan t talking about a grant to? No, no. You, when you said that part of the job of this, I thought you meant of the chairman was uh, yeah, the experts I, I, in the. No, I am be the expert. Or I I'd lost. I got lost in that. No, the chairman should be well versed in in certain areas of of design or construction or engineering or or you know uh, preservation. That's what I'm saying. That. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we'd be well led by someone with with an experience in that, and you know, I think hey. John John brings that experience. Um, that experience. Um, and so well, not, I think most of the members, other than me, <laughs> I'm just here because I'm the old guy that lived in town for forty some years, bring special experiences. And, I would, you know, David yeah. and John, I think have been very helpful. It, it, to, to not only <clears throat> tell the applicant the way they're going wrong, but to give them good suggestions on the way Absolutely. they're going right. Absolutely. And then your experience with architect and, and Reagan's with preservation is, is a neat mix. Um, I you? think that's how I see the governance of this committee as just a committee. Mm -hmm. And the chairman, you know, job is mostly directing it and hitting the gavel every now and then. and. Reading the long lines of yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you think it should be more of a top down as opposed to a committee action? I mean, have uh, no, not at all. I think every voice, and a every voice should be and, equally. Uh, it, every voice is a vote. No, yeah, I, I think I think it's how it yeah. should be. I think how it works. And uh, I mean, uh, I disagree I, with Margo on the massing of. of of one of our projects that we discussed tonight. <laughs> um, really? Hypothetical. <laughs> hypothetically. Um, I just, I feel strongly about one way, and I'm sure she feels strongly, you know, in an opposite way. Yeah. So, yeah, but, no, and I value both of those opinions. Yeah. Uh, and, and somewhere I have to figure out how I fit. You, but you like my me. opinion more. Yeah. Uh, I think that John, John made an interesting I'd point. Like, John made an interesting point about Joe Almeida. That, that the position of chairperson, you said, requires that person to be a little more, I don't know, what's the word, circumspect or not as loud? I mean, what, I don't Insertive. know how. Insertive. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know what, whatever, whatever it was you were saying, Joe needed to be less of. Yeah. And, and so it, in some ways it kind of contradicts what Martin is saying about having your experts being able to speak freely because they know a Chris, boatload. Joe, Not that Joe considered himself a, an expert also. I mean, he is the, <laughs> he is you know, the. Well, I know what he is now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he was then. Yeah, he worked over the Navy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's, it's a, a thing to consider that you want to have your most experienced voices be absolutely free to speak. Now, as chairperson, you can speak as much as you like. If, but, but you said you 
you you well, can't. So it's kind I, of a, it's, I didn't say I can't. I said it, it's just the main job of the chair is to, you know, get the meeting going, get that proposal read, get the, everybody talking, try to get everyone to talk. That's something else I've tried to do. And I don't think that um, we had done that in the past. It was, you know, a lot of people would just sort of sit there and not say anything, and then they would vote. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've tried to get everyone to speak. I can't help, I've got to, it's got to be said, um, I served back in the horse and buggy days on the commission, um, <laughs> and for a good long period of time, uh, the chairman was uh, Mr. John Rice. Um, and, and John, if you're listening, I love you. We all know that. Um, I'm not saying the man's as numb as a pounded post, but he had no issues whatsoever with architecture. But what he was is just effing decent. He was just decent. And anybody that came to that podium spoke, John cleared the floor, swept the walkway, and let them speak their will, and encouraged them, listened, and then chose the next person and ran that meeting like, a, like he was in the military again. Mm -hmm. um, he had no agenda whatsoever. I'm not saying you had to poke him to tell him that it was over, but he was very calm and methodical and went step by step, and he ran a good meeting, and we had I will say those were the salad days of the city of Portsmouth, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yes, there are probably benefits depending on what is the people that are coming before you. One of the things that we had during the John Rice days was a much angrier city council. Uh, the person that I sat next to uh, many for, for many meetings would tell me what the vote would be to do away with the HDC that week <laughs> if it was held in the city council. John Hines, thank you very much. Um, yes. And uh, there were people that came from the floor that were had had the HDC de depend descend upon them like a snowstorm. Uh, there were still old timers, so to speak, that were before that time and were still chafing over the idea that they had to come and do anything. So there was a lot more management of an irate crowd on either side of the dais. Yeah. Um, and so it, it required a different kind of person. And it, not at all, like I love getting in a cage match with you, there's no question about it. Um, <laughs> but it could be that you're absolutely right, but my recognition of John was, he was dead on. So it can be done. I think it can be done with the right kind of person. I am not that kind of person, so I, you know, it's a simple one for me. Okay, anyway, and, and, it's uh, a thing. They try John, to I, eliminate. Uh, so, I got to have, I have to have an issue here with what the way you're going with this thing. You're defending yourself during the process of talking about what's going on. Uh, it doesn't wear well. Yeah. I don't recall last year when we voted you in as chairman that it was a lifetime appointment or that it even had to be in your mind. Uh, it, so. I'm, I'm not sure that, that this isn't like a demotion. This is a choosing of someone to carry the stick or the flag or the torch. But it's not, we're not taking your rank away. You're still a crotchety old man. This is, <laughs> this is something for me to decide. Well, thank you for sharing your process of decision. But that, I, don't, I hope that isn't the thing that sways somebody's decision as to who should be chairman or not. It's not what your feelings are, John, oh my God, that we can't be responsible well, that's for a, that that's sort of a human uh, the, an emotion. I'm oh, geez, sorry. now you're suggesting that other people don't have those? Well, I'm suggesting maybe you don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the first time. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've do, got a ton of emotion. Love your passion. Do we know if Reagan's willing to be vice chair? Do we have to know that by next I think we're January? getting too far into. Yeah. I mean, I feel okay. like I feel you're right. John is like defending his position. Margo, I feel like you're campaigning, and you know, I'm not sure this is the appropriate. I didn't and mean to be defending. Were you laying out qualifications for you? <laughs> <laughs> Look. <laughs> I didn't mean to be yeah. defending myself. But either. What, I, what I just want. What I just I'm wanted like to Sherman, know. I'm you know. What I just wanted to know was march to Atlanta. No, <laughs> you know. If nominated, I'll serve, but I, I have no ambitions. 
What I just wanted to know is when the discussion of who's interested, what they think should happen, what their vision is if they want to be chairman, when all of this would happen, and if it was going to happen first thing in the January meeting, at the end of the January meeting, were we going to have an opportunity to discuss, campaign, whatever you want to call it, before January? I just don't like to walk in blind. So I am. So I'm you have not done that. You know, you, this is our discussion. Okay. This, this is good. This is it. It's too bad that yeah. some people were not here. I know that. it is too bad, and um, I'm sure that uh, they'll catch up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we Thank schedule you. that as the first thing, January? Yeah, we might as well. Yeah. We should no, get an it should idea. happen at the first. Yeah. Yeah. Right off the beginning of the meeting. We got to know if Reagan's interested in being second. Yeah. So yeah. if anybody is. Discuss anything any further with next week, because January is generally when it takes place as the first order. Of I think we agenda. actually went a few years without we, we, without, without doing it, without <laughs> voting. Really? Yeah. That must have been before my time. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was. I, I think it was about three. Or four I know years we didn't ago. always do it in the first meeting in January. Yeah. But yeah. Well, the chairperson would just continue as the acting yes, chairperson. Yes, that's what happened. That would be, yep. that would so we just sort of remember in the middle of February or something. <laughs> when, when Vince, I believe it was when uh, Vince was chair. Mm -hmm. We just sort of kept going. Mm. Well, in the spirit of making it a peaceful event, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe because next week isn't particularly long either. We have more on the agenda than tonight. You guys can decide at the end of that meeting if there's a few more minutes you want to put into the conversation. I'm just throwing that out there. So in January, we'll we can address it. And it's maybe really Reagan's good. here and, yeah. and Rich Karen's here Karen's and Rich is here. here. Yeah. Mm. They can be caught up directly. So move. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. I keep knocking this thing one of these days.